Will you pray with me? May the words of my mouth, the meditations of our hearts, be holy and pleasing in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day that I've been waiting for. Yes, partly because the installation service is happening later this Sunday afternoon, but also because our text this morning comes from one of my favorite moments in the Hebrew Scriptures. It's so powerful and awesome, beautiful and haunting. It's the moment that is referenced over and over again throughout the Hebrew Scriptures. In the Psalms, the, the prophets, remember, I am the Lord, your God, who delivered you from the house of Egypt. It's the moment that is referred to by many liberation theologians, the God who liberates God's people from oppression, from slavery, from the chains that hold them to freedom. It's the moment that makes me cry each time I hear the story retold in the major motion picture, Prince of Egypt. You might remember this movie, and if you haven't seen it, it is on Hulu. And the last time I saw it, it had been years. And when the Israelites get to the Red Sea, and then the wind, the Ruah of God comes and splits the seas, I just cried. I even had an assignment for my first introductory course to biblical studies where we had to watch the Prince of Egypt with our Bibles next to us and see what parts of the movie actually happened in our text. And yes, I did discover that the Prince of Egypt's retelling of the narrative was Hollywoodized. I don't know if that's a word, but Hollywood eyes at some moments. And it also, though, invited me to reread this Exodus narrative with fresh eyes, discovering pieces either long forgotten by me or undiscovered, such as realizing I would be singing the actual condensed Hebrew text as a child. <laughs> and no, I'm serious. This movie which won the 1999 Oscar winner for Best Original Song, When You Believe, has actual Hebrew in the song. Ashira Adonai, and it kind of concludes with Ashira, 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 is actually the condensed version of the Hebrew song found in Exodus 15, the passage after our liturgical passage today. Ashira Adonai, I will sing to the Lord. This story, it's a story that is remembered, that has been retold thousands and thousands of times, that have shaped the identities of a people, a people who follow God, who liberated and delivered. And yet I wonder what awaits for us in retelling of this story. For yes, I'm always comforted by the way that God liberates in this story, that this story reminds me of how God moves in our world. It's a story that reminds me that God is sovereign even over nature, that God's will will be done. And for even when it seems that the Egyptians got the Israelites in the corner, we hear the words, do not be afraid. Stand firm and see the deliverance of the Lord. Yet this time, something new struck out to me when I read this story. Instead of witnessing the deliverance that unfolded by the sea of reeds being split by the Ruah, by the wind of God, or maybe the pillar of cloud that kept Egypt at bay, 
or even how the Israelites were walking on dry ground through the sea of reeds, I realized my attention wasn't on witnessing the deliverance. Instead, I was resonating more with the Israelites. For the Israelites, even though they just celebrated the festival of the Passover, and they just witnessed a pillar of cloud that guides them in a day, and a pillar of fire that guides them all night, they're still, how do I say this? They're still a little hesitant to follow the Lord. As we hear later in our Exodus text, God has chosen the Israelites as God's people, and the Lord will be their God, the one and only God they will serve. Yet before the covenant is sealed, we see a sense of hesitancy on whom they will be loyal to. Yes, the Lord has brought them out of Egypt, yet here they are, stuck between the sea of reeds and the Egyptian army, and then this fear comes over them. They say to Moses, was it because there was no graves in Egypt that you have taken us away to die in the wilderness? Let us alone and let us serve the Egyptians, for it would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die in the wilderness. I get it. They look upon an impossible situation that they are in this current circumstance because they followed Moses, they followed the Lord, who has led them to this place of despair as fear strikes them. As they look upon the Egypts advancing on them, and even though deliverance has been promised, yet not yet recognized, there is a sense from the Israelites, they're saying, we should have just kept serving Pharaoh in Egypt. We should have just kept things the, going the way it was, undisturbed, the status quo. There's almost a sense of regret. I think it would have been better to keep it the way it was since this new place I had been taken to is scary and fearful. Maybe even a murmur. Is it too late to go back? And I resonate with the Israelites because I would be standing there hearing the words of Moses, do not be afraid. And I would say, how can I not be afraid? Look at this miserable situation. And then the comforting good news that is heard is then seen as God protects the Israelites from harm and out of what seemed like a dead end, a new possibility emerged. Not just a possibility emerged, a new pathway is created. For this new pathway they are set on is dry land being separated from the sea, an ongoing act of creation manifested by the Spirit of God. Yet even though this is awesome and amazing and beautiful, I can't help but realize the pillar of cloud has been moved behind the Israelites. And as verse 24 mentions at the morning watch, this means that the Israelites were having to walk across this split sea, this new created path in the darkness, in the darkness of night, hoping that some of the light from the pillar behind them would illuminate their steps as they went forward. Indeed, I resonate with the Israelites for each step forward to where God was leading them on this dry ground with walls of water to the left and to the right in the midst of darkness was indeed an act of faith to walk through. An act of faith, mind you, not absent of complaining, of bitterness, of fear, or even uncertainty in walking through this newly created pathway. For God still does God and delivers God's people. God delivers God's people into the new horizon, asking them to just keep walking forward. And when our passage ends with the newly created pathway being crossed, 
there's a sense of relief of finally being back on dry land that doesn't have waters on the left and on the right. And there's a liberation and deliverance from the misery. For our story for today ends before the Song of Moses, sung in chapter 15. Of Ashida Adonai, I will sing to the Lord. My dear friends, why am I retelling our narrative? And because I truly believe the stories that have shaped the lives of the saints of the past can guide us today. For like the Israelites, God is guiding us. Yet we have been in the place of discomfort, of despair, of misery. And we cry out to God and God through God's spirit protects us and calls us, calls to us to walk on newly created paths. Somehow we take these steps on the newly created path, leaving behind the old and walking towards the unknown new, being assured it is God who guides us, who's been in front of us, behind us, is protecting us. Walking through these paths that somehow are on dry ground with walls to the, of water to the left and to the right, and part of me is sort of just hoping that we can get back to dry land. Let me say, let me make what I'm saying a little bit more concrete. Since we've had to stop meeting in person, I've had, I've been saddened in not being able to see you all in person. Frustrated at the times of sitting in silence during early worship, for example, were behind me. I've been angered at the misery and despair that comes from the COVID pandemic. Angered that violence towards black and brown bodies occurs and that uh, unrest must name the ills of society. I feel like I've been like the Israelites, that we've been like the Israelites. God, where are you guiding us? Where are you taking us? The despair, the anger, the frustration I feel, Lord, where are you taking us? Are you sure we can't just go back to when COVID wasn't a thing? When we were celebrating the arrival of 2020? Can we just go back to then? Lord, where are you taking us? Are you sure we can't just go back to when there was no protest? When things were more calm in our cities? Lord, where are you taking us? And then I realized that we are witnessing a deliverance. We are witnessing the creation of new pathways that we are being asked to walk through in faith. We are witnessing that instead of going back to the days before COVID, the days before the protests, the days before these days, that instead, instead we can witness the new dry land that awaits on the other side of the chaotic waters for i don't desire to return to the old days before the misery since i realized covid unveiled how important health care is a resource that all should have access to covid revealed to our essential workers and how often our essential workers are overlooked or underappreciated. It has revealed how we need to do a better job of taking care of one another, of looking out for one another. COVID revealed how much our teachers, our education staff do for our kids and how we desire to better equip them to teach our children well. I don't desire to return to the old days when protests weren't occurring since it's been unveiled that systemic racism continues to exist in our world, that white supremacy must be dismantled. Yes, it's been difficult and I despise all the despair and misery I have witnessed, but we can walk towards the new land that awaits us, a new land that means liberation and deliverance, justice and mercy for all God's people. Yes, I see now that God is indeed guiding us toward a new creative path. And I may have been busy looking at my feet, shocked that I'm walking on dry ground, on uncharted territory, but I realize God is with me. 
This community is with me. God is with us. When I see families gearing up to walk uncharted territories with us, when I see life groups foster community in these unsettling times, and when I see this church walking on newly created paths, I'm reminded that we truly are walking in faith through newly created pathways. And while I know that, yes, one day we will get to our chapter 15, when we will all be able to get back together and sing a song of praise together to our God. But for now, I will take off my eyes off my feet and witness the deliverance happening today. For I have seen the dry land that awaits us. I have seen the deliverance that awaits us. And I see that our God is guiding us. Do not be afraid, for our God is with us. For we walk by faith, not by sight. For we are on this walk together, in this uncharted territory of this new program year together. And while we may not have reached this dry land yet, let us witness to our God, who guides our steps who creates new pathways and who comforts us when we cry out. For I'll keep telling myself, remember, God is the one who has delivered before. God is the one who walks with you today. Ashira Adonai.